Hello and welcome to a new video. The fourth edition of the TCC Cup has just started yesterday. And in the first round, the round of 32 engines, Lila got paired up with Piraruku, an engine developed by Raoni Campos. And this is the, the first game of their mini match. Lila is white, Piraruku is black, and the time control is 30 minutes and 5 seconds increment. The game started with e4, and after c5, knight f3, and d6, we are already out of the book. And in this position, Lila preferred to continue with d4, the open Sicilian. We have pawn takes, knight takes, and now knight f6, black attack c4, and forces knight c3, which prevents white from playing c4, making d5 more difficult for black. And in this position, we now have a6, so Piraruku likes to play the Nidorf, which is no surprise at all, since the Nidorf variation of the Sicilian is one of the most played variations, and many grandmasters, including Kasparov, made a living playing this um, variation, so it's pretty good. And to this, Lila now replied with bishop e3, the English attack. The plan is queen d2, long castles, f3 and then g4 g5 and so on not necessarily in this order and in this position the main move for black is e5 or sometimes black also plays knight g4 to harass this bishop but in this one piraruku chose to play e6 which is the second most popular choice and now we have a scheveningen structure on the board named after uh, a Dutch seaside resort. Sorry about butchering the name, but Dutch is not an easy language at all. Lila now continued according to plan. We have f3 and now b5, intending to develop the bishop to b7, but also to maybe attack this knight on c3. But Lila at this point is not afraid at all of b4, and she just ignored that pawn and played Queen d2. b4 now is not that dangerous since the e4 pawn is nicely guarded by f3. After b4, this knight can go to a4 and uh, look at these very important b6 and c5 squares. And uh, if needed, this knight can be defended with b3. And the knight also blocks the a pawn. And uh, white is fine here. He just needs to make sure that black somehow can't uh, play bishop d7 and uh, take this knight out but that's very hard to to engineer in this position so instead of b4 piraruku continued development with bishop b7 and now in this position white can either continue the attack with g4 or um, castle long first but lila didn't play any of these because as we know before attack lila likes to stop counterplay and in this position she played a4 she wants to know what are black's plans on the queen side how he wants to develop the attack and by attacking now the pawn four times the pawn cannot be defended and piraruku has to decide whether to take the pawn or push it forward and uh, it's a good idea to challenge black like this at this point before committing the king to the queen side because if uh, things go crazy then uh, the king can still castle short. Now, if black takes on a4, then after knight takes on a4, this pawn on a6 is isolated, is already targeted by uh, rook and bishop, and Stockfish evaluates this at uh, plus one better for white. So in this game, instead of taking, Piraruku continued with b4, keeping the a5 closed and attacking this knight. But we have now knight a2 attacking now b4 twice and here black has to decide how to defend this pawn because a5 is not such a great idea since it gives up the b5 square that can be occupied either by the knight or even better the bishop and uh, this is uh, again a better position for white so instead of a5 we have d5 counter attacking this pawn on e4 and black gets in his uh, liberating d5 break, but this is not necessarily the best d5 break for black, 
yes, it would be if, uh, let's say, white would be forced to, to defend this pawn or uh, take on d5, then yes, knight d5, uh, this would be a dream position for black with this very, very strong knight on, on d5. But Lila is not forced to do any of those. Lila can play here e5 and uh, push this knight back. But nothing new yet in, uh, in this game. Knight d7 is uh, still theory. And now we have f4 defending the pawn. And here Piraruku played knight c5. This knight is boldly heading to e4 to hit this queen. So Lila played bishop d3 to stop the knight. But uh, Piraruku thought here that uh, a bishop is a bishop and I'll take it. And he did. And uh, Lila recaptured with the pawn in order to guard c4 and e4, these two weaknesses in his position. And uh, this allows the queen to continue attacking this pawn. So black doesn't have many choices now. This pawn needs to be defended. And uh, here Piraruku played a5. And his position would be very, very nice if this pawn would be on b3, when um, in addition to having this uh, c3 square to work with, a white piece wouldn't be able to occupy b3. But the pawn is on b2, not only challenging control over c3, but also allowing knight c1, and this knight now wants to go to b3 and attack this pawn on a5. And once this knight is on b3, black will be forced to, um, to defend this pawn all the time with one of his pieces. We now have bishop e7 and here lila castle short. The king is safer on the king's side. Piraruku also castles. And now we have finally the knight going to b3. And here Piraruku played knight c6. He challenges this very strong knight on d4. And here lila now played queen f2. A very good move not only preparing f5 here in this position but the queen and the bishop also have a strong influence on this diagonal in some cases this bishop could go to b6 to hit that queen and take away some dark squares piraruku decided now to to take out this knight on d4 but the other knight takes his place and now in order to stop f5 he played g6 lila now continued logically with rook c1 occupying the open file we have rook c8 challenging the file rook takes queen takes and now playing knight b3 to attack this pawn on a5 would be a very good idea for white but lila found something even better she played here f5 giving up a pawn but getting an attack and of course she would love to play here f6 if allowed and then mate on g7 but piraruku doesn't allow that of course so he took on f5 with the e pawn. Taking with the g pawn would be suicide because after bishop h6, uh, queen g3 is uh, lights out for black, threatening mate on, on g7. So the only option here is e takes on f5. And now we have queen g3 pinning this pawn, threatening knight f5, king h8, and now h4. And Lila is ready to push Harry up the board and either take on g6 in some cases or install this pawn as a torn pawn on h6. At this point she evaluates the position as plus one for white while Piraruku uh, evaluates it as equal, even slightly better for black. The game now continued with queen e8. The queen is the pawn on a4 but now we have bishop h6, rook g8 and now knight b5. The knight not only shields the a pawn but also gets ready to, to go to d6, when if the bishop takes him out, then uh, the, this pawn on d6 would be a dangerous passed pawn. Piraruku continued with queen d7, and now after knight d6, this knight is actually threatening mating 1 on f7, so black doesn't have many choices, even if uh, f7 would be defended by queen e6, Allowing this knight to live here on d6 is not a great idea because it controls c8 and uh, Lila would have uh, uh, the option to go to the open c5 and invade, let's say, to c5 and attack the pawn on a5. So Piraruku had to take this knight and now after e takes on d6, Lila has this uh, dangerous passed pawn. We have rook e8 and here Lila played bishop g5 with the intention to play bishop e7 
when um, the bishop would block the e5 and would allow queen e5 check and uh, the bishop of course would also defend the pawn so here we have now first bishop c6 to attack this pawn but now after bishop e7 Piraruku needs to make a, a decision should he take this bishop on e7 or play something else if he's not taking the bishop now he won't get another chance because after queen e5 check taking this bishop is already too late since this pawn on, on e7 would be very very dangerously close to become a queen and he doesn't really have a choice because if he plays something like bishop a4 for example then uh, after queen e5 check and uh, rook c1 taking over the open c5 first and maybe threatening stuff like this h5 would be very very strong with uh, the idea of playing h6 oops and then mate on g7 and uh, after black moves something and h5 taking this pawn is is not possible either because this is just a mate in two after queen check and bishop f6 mate so peter Luku doesn't really have choices actually and he has to take that bishop and he did and this allowed him to also get rid of this dangerous pawn but now after queen e7 we still have h5 and lila wants to uh, to push this pawn to h6 Piraruku now gave a check on c5 and since the end game is very very good for white being up the exchange Lila decided to go for a queen exchange and not having anything better Piraruku accepted and now after king f2 he played king g7 the best move in the position if the king doesn't go to g7 then uh, h6 would create a mating net and uh, rook c1 rook c8 would be very very dangerous of course and taking this pawn is uh, also of course not very good since uh, this pawn formation is uh, not very good in chess gary alone here can uh, stop any of those four pawns so instead of uh, taking on h5 and also instead of taking with the bishop on a4 which fails for the same reasons h6 rook a1 and then uh, the rook invades with mating threats piraruku played king g7 but now we have b3 defending this pawn d4 this allows the bishop to target b3 we have rook c1 bishop d5 and now rook c5 counter-attacking this pawn on a5 we have bishop takes rook takes and now bishop c2 but the king defends the pawn and in this position piraruku took this pawn on h5 not having anything better and uh, lila continued with rook a6 not only cutting the king but also preparing to push this pawn to a5 we have b3 but now after king d2 the pawn is uh, stopped and uh, after f4 we now have rook d6 and after bishop b1 we have rook takes on b4 unnecessary pushing this pawn probably would have ended the game sooner but rook d4 is fine now we have b2 and after rook b4 bishop a2 and this bishop is coming back to protect the queening square we have rook takes bishop d5 and the bishop is also attacking g2 so we have king e1 f3 pawn takes bishop takes and now a5 and finally the a pawn is moving up the board we have now king f2 king g6 a6 king f5 a7 h4 and now after rook b8 and h3 promoting this pawn would have ended this game sooner but lila played first king g1 uh, we have bishop c6 king h2 king e5 king takes on h3 f6 king g3 and this king is now coming back to protect the d3 pawn we have king f2 king f5 king e3 h4 rook a8 and now finally after king g5 lila promoted the pawn we have bishop takes and rook takes and in this position the game was immediately stopped and adjudicated as a win for lila a very nice game in the sicilian and a good start for lila in the first round of the tcc cup thank you gary catch for your contribution to my channel but also to your suggestions they are welcome and uh, i will try to uh, stick to them i would also like to thank to rene adolf mark sebastian todor radu and guilherme for their contribution and i invite everyone to please subscribe like and share my videos 
and check out some of the other ones here on the right. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.